church is so empty that everybody else is online because <laughs> if not where are you because <laughs> there's nobody here apart from you very special people who've come out on a really cold morning yeah. so what i want to say to you is god has got a word for you today so often we look at who's not here but what i want to say to you this morning is when god brings you here there's a purpose yeah. and he has something he wants you to hear this morning amen, amen. so this morning Flap us off, hearing aids up, no sleeping, hearing aids up, let's make sure that we don't, thanks Peter, let's make sure that we don't miss out on what God has for us this morning, okay? Because so often we just get sort of, we get bogged down with everything, and yet this morning we want to make it all about God. It's not about who's here, who's not here, it's all about God. And so this morning we're going to lead you, we're going to lead you in some time of praise and worship before we hear the word of God from Pastor Steve. A lot of our songs this morning I've chosen are songs to do with the fact that we're going to have the victory, that God takes all the praise, that we are stronger in him. And then when we look at the cross where we come to communion this morning, it is no longer I, it is Christ who lives in me. Amen? Amen. Christ who lives in us. And that's the reason we get up in the morning. Because let's be honest, there are some times where we just want to get back under the duvet and have a duvet day. And that's okay. But we can't stay there all of the time, even though we'd like to. God says we are in the world, but not of it. And so today we're going to stand and we're going to give him all of the praise because we can. Okay, so let's stand together, please.
Lord, whether we're at home, whether we're housebound, whether we're free, whether we're in church this morning, whether we are sick, whether we are heartbroken, Lord, whatever our circumstances are this morning, we give you ourselves. We give you all of our praise. We give you everything we are, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would take all the praise, that, Lord, you would be honoured and, uh, and lifted up, Lord, in our praise and in our hearts today. Father, we pray that whatever it is we need this morning, that, Lord, you will be the one that provides everything for us. Because, Lord, you are the one that makes a way where there is no other way. You are the one that is the God of the impossible. You make things possible. And so, Father, we just want to give you all the praise this morning, Lord. We want to give you all the glory. Because, Lord, without you, we would have nothing. And so, Father, we thank you that we're here today. We thank you, Lord, for your, your grace upon us today. For your mercy upon us today. We thank you, Lord, that you don't treat us as we deserve. But Lord, you are merciful. You are faithful to us. You are a mighty God. And in you, Lord, we can have the victory today. And so, Father, we give you everything today. We ask, Lord, for you to have your way in this service. And be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen.
We will be a little bit of all things. Um, it is, as I say, it's great to see you this morning. Please take your seats and um, we'll get more praise in a moment for worship. But um, it's good to see you this morning. And um, I'm going to share some words with you this morning. And um, Christmas has come and gone. Hey. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, it's all got different perspective on it, haven't we? And um, it's, um, it has come and gone, and we get ready again, and we and um, for another year. And um, and Debs and I, Thursday, I don't know if it was the right thing to do, but we both had our booster jabs, and um, we had it at the same time. And in hindsight, I think um, it would have been better to have had it at different days, and. Um, he wiped me out for two days and he wiped Debbie out for a bit as well. And, um, and I think my, my legs went to lead. I was <laughs> shivery. I was dressed up to go to bed. I never been so cold. It completely not enough. I need to man up a bit. Yes. But it, it was absolutely <laughs> blind me. And, uh, and even now, I've got pins and needles in my legs and my Thanks. legs are all. And I don't know where. So I just pay them. I just fall over in a minute. Because my legs are giving way, okay? Because I just don't know where the pins and needles are coming from. It's not from. the Holy Spirit then. I don't think it is at the moment. I <laughs> um, uh, haven't been brilliant for the last couple of days, and uh, but we're getting there, and um, we're, we're coming through it. But talking of spoo- uh, booster jabs, I think this morning we all need a bit of a spiritual booster jab, yes. don't we? And um, into a new year, whatever's going on, and um, and I pray that what I'm going to share, that's gonna, I'm going to break this up into two parts this morning. Uh, I pray that it will give you the boost that you need in a new year that's already started thick and fast. And it hasn't really changed much from last year. And um, I hope it's going to encourage you to keep going and to um, keep going for your Lord. Are you ready for that? Yeah. And there's two parts. One is practical and one is spiritual. And I want both to be encouraging you as you go through this year. And um, just think about what is going on and who we are and what we're doing for God and, and all that sort of thing. So just wait. You take your hand for a moment to your Lord. Let's just pray. Father God, come and speak into our hearts this morning. Come and touch us anew and um, whatever we need from you this morning, I pray we will receive it. Lord, thank you that you are in the habit of giving out and blessing us. I pray, Lord, that we will be blessed this morning, whether we're in the church, whether we're watching online, or whether we're watching it later on in the week. Lord, whatever's going on, I pray that you will bless us abundantly. And thank you for all those who are here, for those who are tuning in. I pray, Lord, that we will receive something new for a new year. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I read this week that a scientist said we are through the worst of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. That's the sort of response I had when I read it. And I thought, that's fantastic. I thought, that's great news. We're coming through it. You know, that's amazing. And then I thought, is that really true? That's probably what you just thought right then. Is it really true because other people and other scientists have had other things and really we don't know what to believe at the best of times, do we? Because scientists have been known to be wrong. Politicians have been known to be wrong. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Uh, yeah. and, um, <laughs> and to be quite honest, I'm not sure what I believe anymore. Because we've had so many false storms but to make me confident that we are coming through the pandemic, I think, takes a bit more than just reading something from a scientist. I hope it's true. Maybe Ayo can share a bit more. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I hope it's true that we are coming through this, and it'd be amazing if we are. But whether we are or not, one thing for sure, we are all mentally stronger to cope with it than we were this time last year, and maybe the year before as well. Okay? Even if you don't think you are mentally stronger, I want to say to you today and encourage you, yes you are. You are all mentally stronger than you were last year and 2020. And to quote Elton John, I'm still standing. Yeah? Yeah. You're still standing. You've kept on going. You haven't given up. You're still standing despite what COVID has thrown at you in the last two years. And then may you give yourself a clap. Come on. Yeah. Give yourself a clap at home. You're still standing. Yeah. You're still standing. Yeah. 
You're still going. You still keep on going. You're fighting. You're still battling on. You're still going to work. You're still carrying out your business, looking after the family. You're still living your lives. You're still standing. You may be hanging on by your fingertips, but I tell you what, you're still standing. You may not be in church or work watching online, but you're still standing. You may have had a real rough time, but you're still standing. And I say to you this morning, you are stronger than you think you are. Yeah. We are designed to be to be able to cope with a lot of things, aren't we? We all cope differently, but we do cope. Just listen to this list. Don't think of COVID. I know we don't want to think about it anymore, but COVID. Then we've got our, um, well, we've got the devil, haven't we? He throws things at us. We have problems. We have health issues, family life, trials, money problems, financial problems, bereavements, and so much more. All sorts of things to try and knock you and me down and to keep me down. But I say to the devil this morning, I'm still standing. Yes, amen. You ain't going to get me. Yeah. I'm still standing. Hallelujah. Despite whatever's coming my way, mm-hmm. and for you as well, I'm still standing. Amen. I'm still here. I'm still worshipping God. It's been tough. Just as tough as it is for me and Debbie as it is for you guys. Mm-hmm. But I'm still standing. So repeat those words for me. Shout it out. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. A little bit more passion. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. We all want to burst in the song now, don't we? I'm still standing. Then they got it out of your system. Uh, and for all of us this morning, for those who have come to church, watching online, I know it's different for some people. It's been a really difficult, devastating time. But I'm talking about you guys and who are watching. And we're still standing. As a church, we're still standing. I've been knocked around a bit. Debbie's been knocked around a bit. We've all been knocked around a bit. But my faith is too strong to knock me down or keep me down. Yeah? I feel like that victorious boxer, after going 12 rounds, knocked around but still standing at the end of the bout with his arms lifted high in victory. So stand with me. Come on everybody, you have to get I want you to raise your arms. I want you to raise it and go like that. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Okay, take your seats before you fall down. <laughs> you know when that boxer, he's been knocked around a lot. He's bloody, he's bruised, he's probably fallen a bit. But at the end of it, <laughs> He's victorious because he's still standing and the other guy isn't. And we've been knocked around a lot, haven't we? We've been bloodied, we've been bruised, we've been through so much stuff, yet we're still standing. So give yourselves a clap, everybody. I think we just did that one time over. Well done. Keep going. You're doing well. We're still standing because our faith is either too strong to knock us down or keep you down. Even if, you've had, even if you have been knocked down, you've got back up again. You're still standing. It's our faith that has carried us through in 2021, which will carry us through in 2022. Yeah? yeah. Partly because of you, but mainly because of the Holy Spirit. 2022, keep going. You're still standing. Well done. Even if your faith waned last year, even if you felt your faith had gone, even if you have wandered away from God, even if you struggled spiritually last year, you're still standing and still standing spiritually. Well done. Proud of you. And God says the same to you. Well done. He knows what you're going through. It's tough. It's tough stuff out there. I'm good at it. I'll tell you why. Because deep rooted in you, okay, this is about you, deep rooted in you, is a person of strength. Yeah? You may not always think it, but you do have it. A person of strength who loves God, and even though we may get knocked around spiritually, there is a God who still loves us, yeah? And still wants the best for us, and we can't let go of it, can we? We can't let go of God. Even though it's tough. Even though sometimes we just think, I cannot cope anymore, God, you've let me down, and so on and so forth. We just can't let go. 
Because inside of us, there's something deep-rooted that says, I still need him, and I still want him. And you're still standing because of your strength of character and your strong faith. Isn't that good? Yeah. No, impressive. Amazing. You know, it's so difficult. Life is so difficult to do without COVID. And it's had that thrown upon us. And I salute you all this morning for what you've had to endure. You've kept going. And as I said, God is very proud of you, just like I am. It's tough. But we keep going, don't we? Because we know the reward is going to be amazing. You may have been hurt, misunderstood, accused or patronised. You may have been up against it, downtrodden, broken or destroyed. But we're still standing because we've got God's joy within us. And that's what keeps us going, isn't it? It's the joy of God. It doesn't take away all the pain, it just helps us through the pain. I survived 2021 because the fire inside of me burned brighter than the fire around me. Repeat those words. I survived 2021 because the fire inside of me burned brighter than the fire around me. That applies to us all, doesn't it? What's inside the belly? We have the Spirit of God burning. It's going. And if we're to survive 2022, not only will it be because the fire within me burnt brighter than the fire around me, but because of what we've learned in 2021. Yeah? Because we've learned a lot in 2021, haven't we? And if we apply what we've learned about ourselves in 2021, right now at the beginning of 22, then I think rather than just saying Happy New Year, we really can have a Happy New Year. We can have a happy year. We can have a happy 2022. Not just say the words that we do so well at the beginning of this, of any year, but it can be really, really happy. And so to help you all, I've got 20 practical things I've written out, okay? I've got handouts for you, so you don't have to write them down. And if you're watching online, you may want to write them down, but it will go on Facebook, I think, at some point. But if you want to write them down, that's fine. But here are things that I've learned that I think you've also learned that will help you to think about what you've learned and they probably cross over in some way. And so I'm going to touch on them now. As I say, there'll be handouts at the end and um, please take a copy with you. I've learned in 2021 that I'm a tough cookie. Yeah? I am tough and stronger than covid as I did not allow COVID or my issues to hurt me or demoralise me. I embraced it all and fought through it all, and to pass through a church is difficult in the best of times, let alone when COVID comes. But through this pandemic, has been, although it's been unreal, I've come through it unscathed in 2021. We're tougher than we think. Secondly, I have perseverance. I kept going in the midst of adversity, chaos, the unknown, and confusion. <clears throat> I did not quit, but through gritted teeth, I survived. Is this applying to some of you guys? I am more patient than I thought. <laughs> Impatient by nature, I've had to learn to trust God more. I've had to take each day as it comes, not get irritated by what I can't do, but gradually do what I can do. And relax saying that so much of what is happening in our world that is affecting the church is out of my hands. Patience has been a real virtue for me, and I'm sure it has been for you. It certainly has calmed me down. Patience. How are you on the patient front? And before, I'm more flexible than I knew. I went to my local gym to see if I could take up gymnastics. <laughs> they said, are you flexible? I said, I can do Tuesdays or Thursdays. <laughs> 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 <Let it off. laughs> but to the side, I've always been quite flexible in terms of fulfilling my church or family commitments and appointments or living life generally, but 2021 and COVID made me realise just how much I can adapt to adversity or things that are thrown upon me. It's amazing the human body is what we can cope with. And I managed to deal with it without going through all the difficulties or the, you know, whatever grim con condition that we had to face and got through without too much fuss. Because we're quite flexible. Or well, I've been quite flexible. I don't know about you. But this has got me through the year and maybe 
you've learned that about yourself. Maybe you haven't, or maybe you have. But what are you learning, or what have you learned about yourself last year? I also learned laughter is better than stress. Is that good? Stress is easy to do. Laughter is harder sometimes, isn't it? I was once told by a church pastor to laugh your way through church ministry. I'll tell you what, it saved me a lot of problems. It hasn't stopped all the problems, but it's helped me cope with them better. And he was absolutely right. I have also applied that to my life generally because laughter is better than stress. Laughter is the antidote to stress. Stress doesn't take, or doesn't get us anywhere, I'll tell you what, just to an early grave. Stress doesn't change anything, and although laughter doesn't much either, it does help us to cope better. We're more relaxed over what we're facing and makes other people smile as well. Have you learned to laugh through stress and the problems of COVID? It can take away a lot of pain. Number six, I cope better than I ever thought I could. In 2021, I simply embraced all that came my way. Trusting God through it all with a belief, I will be okay, we will be okay, the church will be okay. Not knowing what's going to happen, but just believing we're going to be okay. To allow the Holy Spirit to encourage me, empower me and guide me. Rather than getting bogged down with it. Number seven, I also learned worrying didn't help me one tiny bit. When COVID and life issues get the better of me, spending hours and days worrying didn't change anything. In fact, worrying made me worry more. When I eventually accepted what I couldn't change and had the courage to change the things I could, I worried less. When I eventually accepted what I couldn't change and had the courage to change the things I could, I worried less. Number eight, the Holy Spirit empowered me more than I realised. Although we're given the ability and the brain to work things out or simply to cope, looking back to last year, I knew that it was the Holy Spirit that empowered me more than I empowered myself. In fact, and fact, without the Holy Spirit, I would not have coped. Number nine, whatever tried to knock me down, I came back stronger. I was determined to use what was to harm me to better me and develop me. Number 10, the blessings always surpass the negativity. However small, and I include our little grandson, baby Ollie, the blessings always outshone the gloom. The little things can outdo the gloom. Number 11, I can cope with just about anything, even if it is painful at times. We've learned that, haven't we? We can just get on with it, we get going, don't we? Number 12, I've also learned the only one I can really trust is God. <laughs> just turn on the news. Who can you trust today? What can you trust? Can you trust what you read and hear? Sadly, no one will know in many cases. Number 13, God has still looked after me and my family even when I doubted him. did not it? We've all doubted God the last couple of years. God doesn't leave us or condemn us because we're struggling or get annoyed with him. His love is unconditional. And I tell you what, that was proven last year. Number 14, it's important to belong to a church fellowship and not be on your own. This isn't just about coming to church, but having a group of friends and Christian brothers and sisters and a church pastor to help us all and call upon in our times of difficulty. I realised in 2021 just how much we need each other. Don't be a lone Christian because you won't survive spiritually. <coughs> I've also learned I can turn my hand to just about anything. <laughs> Especially technology. I can now preach to a camera. Yeah, I even preached to a camera not knowing if anybody was listening. <laughs> or anybody was out there a few months back. Just me, Debbie and a some of the worship group. Just, is anybody out there? Even now I don't know who's out there. But we did it. And we've coped. We've recorded services. We've done live. We've done Facebook live. We've done online. We've recorded it. I've had it all written out. I've done it in the conservatory, in the shed, upstairs in the attic. I've preached anywhere. I've even led meetings on Zoom and even muted people. <laughs> 
I can record or go live. I, I've also painted the church, most of the church, in the last year and a half. Yeah, thank you. I've changed many ceilings in the church, not in there, but up there and up there, and up there and around there. I've changed a lot of electrical plug sockets at home. We've done the whole lot. Yeah, thank you, YouTube. You told me a lot. I tell you what, it's amazing. It? Oh, you turned the fuse box off. You're okay. It's amazing what you can do when you set your mind to it. I've learned a lot in the last year. I can turn my hand to just about anything. I've also learned that being together in person is better than being detached from Facebook Live. Now that's okay for those who are at home and got issues and problems, housebound and so on, but if you're just staying at home because it's more convenient, then you've got a problem. We need to be with each other. And I know some haven't been back for those obvious reasons, but this building is also a very safe place to be. And like with last week and this week, the windows are open, it's only absolutely freezing cold, we will keep them closed, but hopefully we're through that weather now. And so the windows are open and barring the freezing cold temperature, we will have them open. But I want to encourage you, if you're not housebound or have life-threatening condition, to come back to church. Because there is a few of us here, and there's a lot of you missing. You know, we spend less time properly in church on a Sunday than most people spend in a supermarket on Sundays. Yet they're all very happy to wear a mask in the supermarket, but we can't come to church and wear a mask. Yes, I'm going to point the finger a little bit today. I want you to come back to church, to get back into the habit of coming. I just want you to look at the cross in front of you for your inspiration. You know, the camera may not always be on, so get into the habit of coming back to church. You know, what did your Lord do for you if it's just about wearing a mask? For an hour and a half, an hour and a quarter, an hour... When you look at what Christ did on the cross, I do trust that's your inspiration to come. But COVID is a risk, we know that. And if it's a big risk, we will close the church. If it's not as much a risk, we will keep it open, mask on or mask off, whatever the case may be. Masks on at the moment. But if there's a big issue, we will close it. Otherwise, please come back. And for those of you who are here, thank you. Keep coming. Don't stop coming. Because there is the habit of stopping Keep coming. I've also learned that people are more important than church programs and activities. Both are good, both are needed, both is good to keep the church going and to grow with each other, but I've also learned that people are far more important. Apart from God, this is what church is about. It's about being together, encouraging, learning, growing spiritually together. And we need each other. And I say to you, encourage each other, because there is no church without the people. Don't put people off from coming. Encourage them in there. Be a blessing, because it's not always the case, certainly. I've also learned we are one year nearer to Christ's return. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Yeah. yeah, it's a good one to keep you going, isn't it? I've also learned I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yay. Philippians 4.13. That's not bad, is it? That's a pretty good one. And I've also learned finally, I'm still standing, I've said this before, I'm still standing partly because of my character, but mainly because of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that applies to you a lot. And most of this probably applies to you anyway. What have you learned last year? I trust these 20 practical steps of what I've learned will help you, and as you take them away and, and go through them, and maybe add to them, would help you through this year. So the question is again, what did you learn in 2021 that would help you in 2022? And maybe help other people as well. You know, it's tough out there, and not everybody has God in their lives. We are very privileged people, don't ever underestimate that. So as we close this bit of the section of the talk, I want you to stand, and ask the worship group to come back. And we're going to sing our raise a hallelujah. Because we are stronger, we are wiser, and we are tougher. We are better equipped to cope with COVID and Omicron and everything else that may come. And rather than just surviving this year, we can actually thrive 
in this year. And I want this song to be a real encouragement to really go for it. Not be worried about what's happening out there. We know what's happening out there. It's what's happening in our hearts and in our minds that I'm concerned about. I'll raise a hallelujah. Let's go for it. Turn to Psalm 92, would you please? Because this past week I've read from this psalm quite a bit. And um, just focusing on one specific verse of it that I want to look at. So 
Psalm 92, verse 12. We're also going to read verse 13 as well. As this is David writing. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. So it's verse 12 I want to focus on. They will, the righteous, which is the Christian, this, which is us, will flourish like a palm tree. Yeah? And I read that, and I was really quite... I just took my breath away, really, and I started to do some investigating into the palm tree and to think more about it. And just thinking about the hot climates that the palm trees grow in just made me feel so much warmer and more comfortable and happy because of the problems that we're going through right now. So that was quite a good exercise just doing that. And, um, and just thinking about the Americas and India and Japan and Asia and Australia, Israel and South Africa, to name a few countries, where these palm trees grow. It brought warmth to me. But what really struck me about this verse is not the hot climate or the palm tree itself, is about, but it's more about what they can actually cope with. But I love it where it says, the righteous will flourish. Yeah? And I'm going to unpack that a little bit more in a moment. But why did David talk about the palm tree? How many different types of palm tree do you think are in the world? Ten? Yeah, you think there's ten or twenty or so? Forty, fifty? Different species of palm tree, anybody? Over three hundred, anybody? Possibly. That answers everything, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, there's over 2,600 different species of palm tree. They're amazing, isn't it? And they all produce different things, coconut, banana, oil, you name it. To don't have enough time to go through it all. But I was staggered. The different species of palm tree. And in the Bible, the palm tree is mentioned about 60 times. I think David and God have something to teach us about palm trees. And the palm trees figure quite significantly as well in Exodus, because when the Israelites escaped from Egypt, they stopped firstly at a place called Elam which is where we get our name from, in Exodus 16, verse 1, and they came to an oasis of palm trees, and that's where, as I say, we get our name from. And it bears much fruit. And the palm tree that David is writing about in our text also bears fruit, and all year, all year long. From January to March, you can obtain milk from it. From April to June, you can eat from it. July to September, it becomes soft to peel. And then from October to December, it can either it can be eaten like a plum. It's amazing, isn't it? What we get from a palm tree. So all year round, despite the heat, this palm tree produces fruit. And all palm trees are symbolic of fruitfulness, health, endurance, and steadfastness. Yeah? But what I like most about the palm tree is its toughness. Because they're pretty tough. Trees. It's not the delicious fruit that comes from them. It's I'm more interested about how tough they are. And any of these palm trees have the ability to withstand monsoons and adverse weather conditions because of their roots and their durability. Alan, please put the first picture up. We've all seen what a palm tree looks like. No. We all know what a palm tree looks like, don't we? <laughs> and it's probably a good job we do. Yeah. And there it is. When it's being blown around by the winds and the monsoons and everything else, it bends over. And it can bend over for up to five to six hours. Yeah? It's pretty amazing, isn't it? And then he, guess what he does after that? We all know what happens after that. Alan, next picture, please. We're on a bit of a wrong now. <laughs> he says optimistically. That should be the second slide, um. Is it there? Okay, he 
the gremlins are in today. Okay, it's obviously not going to come up. Please do say behind me if he does come up on the screen. Will you? <laughs> okay, anyway, the other one is basically when the palm tree is stood upright. <laughs> it's, um, it's not rocket science, but um, just to help us escape the coldness, I thought I'd throw some palm trees in. And, um, but amazingly, after being blown around for so long, they then just stand back upright again with them, Brother Alan, don't worry. It's just incredible that no matter what comes their way, they can bounce back up again to their usual position. And there it is. Beautiful. It's this gate, wherever your mind is right now, just getting lost in um, the beauty of those trees. And, and that was worth it, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? And... Um, <laughs> They get bent over by the winds, and then when the winds and the monsoons are all gone and everything else, they just spring back into what they were and standing up right again, which is pretty impressive stuff. And I believe that this analogy of the palm tree, that I want it to be an encouragement for us this year, because of all that we've been through, a bit of a boost to help us because of the monsoon of COVID that has hit us, I believe God is saying to us this year, we're going to bounce back up again, yeah? Amen. We're going to spring back to what we were before COVID hit, yeah? In the right way. We will bounce back to our usual position of uprightness. And not only that, we will blossom and flourish too. Because I tell you what, palm trees still flourish and blossom even when they're bent over and even when they're being knocked around by the wind. They're still producing fruit. Quite impressive. This is the year of bouncing back, yeah? I'm not saying that COVID is going to be gone this year. I can't predict any of that. What I do believe that God is saying, we're going to bounce back, and we're going to bounce back stronger. And we're going to be stronger to cope. We will stand upright after the onslaught of the pandemic, however long that goes on for. This is the year where we come through the disappointments. This is the year that God will straighten us up after being bent over so long with the winds of COVID knocking us over. Amen. Yeah? Amen. Receive that. I really do believe that. Yeah. Because why? We're tougher. Yeah. We're wiser. We're stronger. God has taught us a lot through it. Yeah. And he's going to intervene in our lives in a greater way this year. Yeah. And I believe that God's going to do that. Whatever happens in our world is out of my control. It's out of anybody's control apart from one person. And what he wants to do with us is up to him. But God says, I'm going to intervene. And I'm going to touch you. But here's an interesting thought about the palm tree. When it stands upright again, it's stronger than it was before it got blown over. Isn't that amazing? It's actually stronger. The roots are so embedded into the ground. They're so strong that when it comes back up, it's stronger than it was before the storm came. You can see where that's been going with that one. Yeah. So you guys are stronger being blown over a bit than you were a couple of years ago. Because that's how God works. We're toughened up. We need to go through the tough times because it's the tough times that toughen us up. The good times are good, but it's the tough times that make us. And if life was just the bed of roses, we would not cope so much. It's those tough times or the monsoons of the COVID that makes us stronger. And with all the battering the palm tree goes through, it still produces fruit. Wow. So when you straighten back up, you are going to be stronger. You're getting stronger now. And you're going to be stronger. And you're going to get stronger. Just think to where you were two years ago. Spiritually. You're going to be healthier. You're going to be wiser. And you're going to grow yeah. Can I say that's encouraging? Isn't it? Yeah, that's Just give me the other. We're going to be stronger. Whatever's going to go on in our lives, we're going to be stronger to cope with it. And I want that to be an encouragement for us all today to keep going. Because God's obviously got plans for you. You know, otherwise you wouldn't be still standing. You wouldn't be even in church. You'd probably be doing lots of other things. But God says, I've got a plan for your lives. This year is where you're going to take off. So while we're sorting out the mics, just close your eyes for a moment. 
Just think about what you learned last year and how you can apply this year. How resilient you've been. How tougher you are compared to what you thought you were. Maybe just coming into church this morning is throwing your mind open. Actually, I didn't see it that way before. Didn't understand it that way. Maybe God's doing more in you than you realise. And I'm sure he is in all this. I believe this year is where we're going to get stronger to cope better. Stronger to embrace everything. Stronger to hear God speak to us. Stronger to deal with negativity and setbacks. Stronger to tell the devil to get lost. And stronger to cope with all that God wants you to do for him. Stronger to do life. Stronger to cope at work and with family life. This is the year to bounce back. This is the year that God wants us to bounce back. You're going to allow God to straighten you up again. It's about trusting God. He says, I'm going to do it. Come on, watch me. Do new things. Allow yourself to blossom in 2022. What have you learned? What is going on right now in your heart and mind? I think God's blown us over for a reason. Because he's got more for us to do. And if we're not toughened up, we won't go. And anybody who serves God, there's always more to do for him. Anybody who loves God is always more. It's up to us whether we rise to the challenge or not. And if you are going to rise to it, don't get blaming God for everything. Actually, it's good to be toughened up every so often. It's painful, but it's worth it. And if you want to serve God, if I was to ask you if you produce spiritual fruit or blossom spiritually during the last two years, I am convinced every one of you will say yes. Yeah. If I was to ask you if you produce spiritual fruit or blossom during COVID, I would say, every one of you would say yes. Why? Because as Christians, living with Jesus, living with God, we have to produce fruit. We cannot not produce fruit if you're really living for God. Because God works as the palm trees approved we can still flourish and blossom and produce fruit even when we are being blown over. That's why David likened us to a palm tree. That's why God inspired David to write. Because we can still produce fruit even when we are having a very bad time. It's amazing, isn't it? Even in those really dark days, you are still bearing fruit. You may have encouraged somebody with a word. You may have brought a blessing, a comforting word. You may have bought a word of inspiration. You may have bought somebody a cup of coffee or ironed some clothing for somebody. You may have just knocked on the door to bless someone. We don't have to be sitting on a mountaintop for God to use us. Because more often than not, he uses us in those dark valleys. So don't underestimate the role you have played in people's lives in 2021. Just think about the role that you can play in 2022. So going back to the question I've asked you a few times now, what did you learn about yourself last year? And as we look back to 2021, and as you've seen what God has done through you, what is God going to do through you now? Get ready for what God's going to do. When your palm tree is really upright once again, get ready for big things, better things, different things. It doesn't matter how tough life gets for the palm tree, it still continues to produce fruit. And you too can still flourish and blossom, even if you really feel in a very dark place. David is saying to us all, the righteous will flourish like the palm tree, and it doesn't matter how difficult your life gets, you can and will bounce back by the grace of God. Amen.
And I think that's amazing. It's great encouragement. It's encouraged me this week. Debbie as well. We just need to be grounded firmly in God as the palm tree is grounded firmly in the in the ground. Once you're firmly grounded in God, you're not going to break. You'll get blown over a lot. You cannot stop that happening, but you're not going to snap in two. The palm tree does not snap in two. So would you stand with me again? Because we're going to come to that second song which leads us into communion. The reason we won't step, the reason we won't break into two is this reason. For the Lord your God is with you. And that is a great text, great verse to take into this year. The Lord your God is with you. I'm still standing. We're still standing. You're still standing at home. Because God is being with us. And we have the greatest thing that the world can ever give, and that is God himself. That is Jesus. As we look at the cross, be inspired to keep going. Be inspired to sacrifice more for your Lord. But as you look at the cross, sing this song with passion. I'm going to see a victory. Because as we look at the cross, it's not defeat when Christ was on the cross. It was victory. His death brought victory. Everybody else saw it as defeat, but Jesus saw it as victory. And today we can see a victory because he's with us. He died, but he rose again. And we're still standing because we know he's going to come back again as well. So let's sing this song, Debbie, please. I'm going to see a victory.
take your seats for a moment. We're going to celebrate communion if you're watching at home. You may want to get some bread and some juice to be able to celebrate together where you are. Just looking at the cross as we were singing and just picture Jesus on the cross. Maybe you want to do that now. And when his head bowed, just before he died, it's like his body being blown over. But he didn't get blown in the two, he didn't. He, he bounced back again, didn't he? A couple of days, a few days later, he bounced back. Probably stronger than he was before. He may have been bent over, but he wasn't broken. It wasn't broken in two. And, uh, and I just see that as a picture for us all today. Jesus bounced back, and so can we. And as we come to the cross, I want you to see the emblems as victory. I want you to take it and have the victory this morning. All that's coming this year, we're going to celebrate the victory. on the cross as our inspiration to keep going and that we're going to come back stronger stronger to serve him stronger to live for him and stronger to talk about him to the table and just to receive but to also maybe give a celebration a victory salute like we did just a moment ago that we are still standing because of our Lord and his power within us and that we can fight another year and we can keep going because our Lord is with us and I'm going to ask that to go around the church from your right all the way around to the bank we'll start with showing that please come and take be blessed. So we're going to see a victory this year in an incredible way. May God bless you as you receive this morning. Thank you. 
you that. We just thank you that as you overcame death, we can overcome COVID. We can overcome our problems. And Lord, help us to look to you as our source of strength and our encouragement and our inspiration to keep going in, in this year. And Lord, I pray it will be an incredible year. And Lord, I pray that you'll touch us all in, in a new way, in a greater way. We just thank you for what you mean to us. And thank you, Lord, that you are alive today, and that you are coming back. And Lord, we just thank you that each day, each year is another is nearer to your return. So help us to keep our eyes focused on you. Lord, I pray for our world at the moment. Lord, I pray your hand upon it, upon our government as well as we go through this difficult time. And with all the other issues too, Lord, we pray and move the Holy Spirit in a powerful way in 2022. Lord, we pray that you'll break down barriers, Lord, you'll turn hardened hearts into soft, soft hearts, Lord. And we just pray that we'll see more people coming into the kingdom. I pray for Evelyn too, Lord, and for Clooney Third and the wider family and the, the difficulties that they're going through at this moment. And we pray for, for Sheena, and we pray for Lynn and Colin, Diane, who's not too well, and Diana, Lord, and we can, others that we can mention, for Shell too, Lord. We just continue to pour out your healing power upon these people and bring comfort where it's needed. And Lord, may they know your joy at this time. Well, thank you that you can mean so much to us all in so many different ways and all at the same time. And whatever we need today, right now, I pray we will all get something from you. And Lord, what we've learned this morning as well, we can take into this year with a new confidence and a new boldness to keep going for you, to stand up for you and to sing your name in all circumstances. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Please, uh, we're going to finish our service now, and uh, thank you for joining us. And um, please, if you're able to give in the offering, there's a basket at the back. I'm going to hand out the handouts. Could you just take these and put them on the table? So please take one all the way out. And um, if you've got any questions, it would be great. Text me, ring me, get to talk things through, whatever you're going through. And I pray you'll have a great day, a great year, a great month. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. God bless you all. Thank you.